one note is off, it eventually destroys the whole symphony, David. I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, at the beginning you hear that saying from the movie Alien Covenant, if one note is off, it can ruin the entire symphony. Well, just a simple thing like a spider web and being able to properly explain its existence could change the entire Ramsey case. And the the whole John Bonet Ramsey case, a lot like the Madeleine McCann case, Seems like a tangled web. When you approach it from a distance, it seems very jumbled, very disorienting. But And then when you approach it, you realize just how much of that tangled web has been deliberate, deliberately woven. And that actually makes it easier to disentangle. First of all, you start by separating the inauthentic, the stage narrative, the PR narrative from the rest of the narrative. And then it just becomes a lot easier just following the evidence. Many have gotten lost in it, in all of these threads and tangents. Many have been confused by it. And in the middle of writing books on it, you do sometimes feel like you're drowning in all of this information. And um, some have gotten so confused, so much so, that we've forgotten about the actual web, the actual spider web, the one in the basement window. Just like the ransom note, this is evidence And if interpreted properly, this evidence alone could prove or disprove the intruder theory. That's how big it is. And at the end of this analysis, we'll be looking at two spider experts, what they say about the web, about the type of spider that we're dealing with here. But before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Bear in mind, I also want to talk about the whole stun gun scenario. So look out for that. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So what is the most famous spider web in Colorado? And I'm not talking symbolically. Well, it is probably this one. And appropriately enough, there is a real spider web within the labyrinth of the Ramsey case. Every now and then the spider web comes up, but you don't really see more than a passing attention paid to it. And we're going to focus our attention on that in this analysis. Now, in 2012, it seemed as if the spider web came under the spotlight for the first time. I say seem. Uh, It appeared in Kolar's self-published book, Foreign Faction. At At around about that time, Kohler told the Denver Post, quote, My theory definitely went against an intruder. There was strong physical evidence that discounted the intruder theory as it existed, end quote. Okay, well, what was that strong physical evidence? Well, what do you think it was? In his book, Kohler says that an intact spider web left in the Ramsey home window provides telling evidence that no one entered from the outside to kill the child. Now, strangely, though, it wasn't just Alex Hunter who covertly supported the intruder theory. It was also the next DA, Mary Lacey, who did too, though less covertly. In 2012, she gave her opinion on Kolar's book to the Daily Beast. She said, I think it's unprofessional for him to be writing a book based on conjecture. Lacey herself did a few unprofessional things, uh, arguably, like going off to John Mark Carr, based on genuinely flimsy conjecture. I mean, she was the DA. Then in 2016, four years later, and on the 20th anniversary, when former FBI agent and criminal profiler Jim Clemente and behavioral analyst Laura Richards were on their way to, what they were trying to do was prove who really killed John Bonet. Do you remember that CBS docuseries, the one that was ultimately sued into silence for three quarters of a billion dollars? 
It was called The Case of John Bonnet. Well, in that series, they also made a passing reference to Kola's work on the spider's web. Do you remember that? It's, it is an important detail, arguably the most important detail, when discussing the merits of the intruder theory. Now, for all Lou Smith's perceptual powers, for all of his abilities to find important evidence in photos, I don't recall him ever bringing up the spider web, because I suppose if he had, that would effectively be the biggest flaw to his own theory. But we're going to do that right now. When you've written books about the Ramsey case, you become a collector of paraphernalia. You pick up or people give you all sorts of things connected to the Ramsey case. And I was given a magazine article when I was in America, or a magazine uh, dated September 15, 1998, titled John Bonnet Grand Jury Bombshell. And this is it's in this magazine on page 33 that it discusses this whole devotes an entire page to the spider web evidence. And again, bear in mind when this comes out, in the middle of the whole grand jury uh, investigation, right? Now, by now, I think many of you have probably heard about the basement window as the intruder's principal point of egress and presumably also access. Few of you have heard about or seen footage of the spider's web, I'm guessing, and I'm guessing only a handful of you know what type of spider and thus what type of web we are talking about here. If you are one of those handfuls, please put up your hand and leave a comment. I'd be interested to see who you are. There's actually a pretty decent and well-researched analysis of this topic on Phil Richard's Science of Reasoning post on Tumblr. I'll put a link to that in the description. But even I've, I've got to admit, in a niche area like spider behavior, we really do need to defer to the experts. And that is what Boulder PD, to their credit, apparently did. Now, before we deal with these spider experts, plural, I do want to put you guys into the right context. As early as 1998, when many of the tabloids thought they were closing in on the real culprits in the Ramsey case, the Inquirer published a story focusing on the grate and the type of web that was found in it. The Inquirer published a story in the middle of this grand jury investigation. It was September 1998. And part of that analysis, so although it included all of this stuff about the grate and the window and the spider web, in that same uh, magazine, they also looked at Fleet White's observations when he accompanied John Ramsey downstairs. So in other words, it's basically standing in front of this window and and being in the basement. What did Fleet see? What did John say? And Fleet had told the cops, according to the article, that he found the window closed when he went down to the basement earlier that morning. In 1998, it was still fresh in the minds of the cops that the open basement window story apparently wasn't something John mentioned uh, on the morning after Christmas. He didn't seem to mention it at the time. While I'm talking about while the cops stood around for hours in the Ramsey home. At least according to the article, he didn't bring it up to law enforcement and he didn't mention it, again, at least as far as I can remember, during his first interview on CNN. He did bring it up to law enforcement for the first time, again, as far as I know, four long months later, and that's also according to the Inquirer. I know what you're thinking. Who can trust the tabloids? But if you do a Google search for news stories on the Ramsey case, and you can do a targeted search, and remember it was being covered hour to hour, wall to wall. Well, I can't find a single story about an open window in those four, first four months. The first that mentions open broken window and broken glass is from Anne Bardak's seminal investigative piece, Missing Innocence published in Vanity Fair on October 1st, 1997. If you can one, find one that is earlier than that, please let me know. This is a quote from that article. Fleet White told us that Ramsey went directly to a small broken window on the north side of the house and paused. Fleet said to Ramsey, Hey, John, look at this. And John said, Yeah, I broke it last summer. He wanted Fleet to see the window to set up an intruder theory, 
but no one but a small child or a midget could have crawled through that space. While Fleet is looking at the window, John disappears down the hall directly to the little room where the body is, end quote. Lou Smith would later prove that a grown man could quite easily squeeze through the window. What he didn't demonstrate was how one could do that and also get out while leaving a largish chunk of web wobbling in the midwinter breeze, you know, uh, this wind that was sort of drafting in and out of the basement. It took a while for proponents of the intruder theory to acknowledge and then try to explain away the spider web. Of course, it doesn't help that footage of the web on the window is all over the internet these days. Their counter-argument would eventually be that um, having the web destroyed, well, an enterprising and energetic spider simply got to work and spun another web. And that is often how the Ramsey case goes, one step forward, sometimes a half a step back or two steps back. When you dig a little further into the spider web aspect, it turns out that there was an intact spider web outside on the grate, and as I understand it, kind of on the outside of the grate, and that this web ought to have been destroyed when the intruder raised and dropped the grate. Now, this is speculation from my side, but if you were standing in the basement early on the morning after Christmas and you wanted to stage the window to look like a point of egress, you're trying to find some way that you can tell law enforcement, yes, there was a place where someone must have broken in, somewhere that someone had gotten in or out. Well, perhaps you would open the window, find a spider web there, and then brush away the web if it was there. But the web on the grate might be a different story because it might be difficult to reach and thus more difficult to get rid of. And perhaps that is why someone moved the suitcase there to try to clamber up the wall in order to get the web at the grate. In any event, it's a strong counter-argument that a spider might have simply respun the web afterwards. It's doubtful because it was winter, and I don't know if you know this, but the uh, Christmas Day, the 25th of December, was one of the coldest days of the entire month of December in Boulder. But there is also enough room to doubt that a spider couldn't have done this, unless, of course, you know spiders. It turns out that the species behind the web in question, Agalinidae, or the funnel weaver, they are very fast runners. In fact, one of these house spiders held the Guinness Book of World Records title for top spider speed until 1997. So could Agalinidae have respun, that's the funnel spider, the funnel weaver, could it have respun the basement window um, lickety split? Here's the long answer from Wikipedia. Like any fast-running spider, the Agalinidae possess good vision and are generally photosensitive. They react to changes in the light. So they can successfully retreat upon perceiving a larger threat shadow approaching. Some are also sensitive to wind blows and can retreat before the prey even spots them. Males are less successful ambushes than females, quite interesting. And so they prefer to roam around and wander to new areas rather than stay in a one single web. So it does seem like this basement spider was possibly a female. In September, males of outdoor species such as Agalenopsis and Agalenae can seek refuge within houses, usually nesting on or underneath outer, outer window sills or also around the porch door. These spiders often are neither pest controllers nor pests themselves. They are just very selective in their prey, and they do not consume large quantities. Also, they are immune to intimidation and come back to their webs even after they have been disturbed, unless they are completely destroyed. Now, I think one way of determining whether this web was... was um, what's the word, uh, a web from a previous time, is if there was any kind of uh, prey that was actually caught in the web. One would imagine if it was respun, it wouldn't be enough time to actually catch anything in that web. Does that make sense? In any event, here's the shorter, more definitive answer from Dr. Brent O'Dell, a.k.a. Mr. Spider-Man, an entomologist from Virginia State University's Department of Biology. 
Boulder detectives said that one type of spider web is called a cob or funnel web. And this type of web is continually worked by the spiders who make additions to their webs. The second type of web is the one that is replaced frequently by orb weaving spiders and they can replace a web at any time of day and within 12 hours. Now, according to Mr. Spider-Man, Opel, he concluded that the spider web outside the basement window at the Ramsey home was a cob funnel web. Opel was also of the opinion that the web found on the grate directly above the open basement window was, he was certain, undisturbed for at least a month prior to the December 26 incident. And there is a picture of him, I think it's him, actually standing right there, looking at the window and I guess examining the web. Professor Opel estimated that the web was spun no later than November and probably earlier. If this is true, it might explain why Ramsey took so long to make his statement to the police. It might be, have been one of the factors. Had he made the statement right there and then, with the spider webs in place, it might have been a lot easier to focus on this and disprove it. Also, four months later, the conditions would have changed significantly besides the evidence at the scene itself. But then a second spider expert, Dr. Robert Bennett of the British Columbia Ministry of Forests, he also concluded that the web was a funnel web. Dr. Bennett in his report, and I don't know whether this is a report that was requested by Team Ramsey, by the defense, I don't know if this was for law enforcement or for the defense, but he said, Spiders hibernate in the winter in temperate zones. Boulder is definitely a temperate zone. Therefore, during winter, there's markedly less or no activity at all by the spiders normally found in Boulder. Well, there you have it. That ought to be the end of it, right? Well, there, like there so often is in this case, there is a caveat. Dr. Bennett went on to say, if a spider web is destroyed in winter, a spider will emerge if it's warm enough, meaning he'll come out again and then go about his business. Bennett added that in Boulder, when the weather is warm enough to melt the snow away, the spider would be out. Bennett explained that if a web were disturbed, as on the basement window grate, the spider would have dropped out of the web on a silk drag line and then climbed back up and begun spinning where he was prior, where he was prior to being disturbed. Now, according to this article, though it was recorded to be six degrees on the night of the murder, that's Fahrenheit, the weather in Boulder rose to 51 degrees Fahrenheit the next day, and the Ramsey's basement window faced the southwest. That's in a position receiving a lot of sun exposure. And so they conclude, they say conditions thus were theoretically good for spider web weaving. If the spider had not been able to spin a web in December 1996 in Boulder, um, covering the southwest facing basement window, the suspect list would have ruled out the intruder theory completely, leaving detectives to focus on family members or only those with house keys to the Ramsey home. Well, there you have it. So close, and yet so far. Thank you for listening. I'll be following this analysis with a look at the stun gun theory. And so look out for that.